Hello, my name is Zach Gibbs, and I'm a content developer within Education Services inside Juniper Networks. And today we will be going through the configuring MacVerf L2 and L3 isolated tenants learning byte. All right, so here is our topology, and in this topology we have four switches. However, we'll be primarily focusing on just on one switch. So those four switches in our little data center here are Spine 1, Spine 2, Leaf 1, and Leaf 2. Now we'll be focusing the configuration of Leaf 1 right now with uh, configuring the L2 and L3 isolated tenants. And so we can kind of ignore the other devices, but it's important to be aware that they are there. And then we do have Host 1 and Host 3 that are connected in through MacVerfs. And each of those will have its own separate MacVerf. And so then we will be configuring some T5 verfs that those hosts will be using to communicate through and also having two separate Mac T5 verfs like that will provide L2 and L3 isolation for the tenants. And so something else I do want to point out is the host parameters. Host 1 is going to be part of VLAN 10 or V10, IP address of 10.1.1.1, VNI of 5010. And host 3 is going to be VLAN V20, which uses VLAN ID 20. IP address 10.1.2.3 and VNI 5020. And the thing to keep in mind here is we want to isolate these hosts. If these hosts need to communicate, it needs to go through something like a firewall. And we're not even going to be focusing on that part of it for this learning byte. That will be a later learning byte. So definitely keep an eye out for that. And so these two hosts should not be able to communicate with each other as it is right now. And so something else to point out is the IRB interfaces. The IRB interfaces, IRB 10, is going to be the layer 3 uh, interface uh, that is going to be in the T5 VRF. And that's going to have the IP address of 10.1.1.254. And that's going to be the virtual gateway address for host 1 for that subnet. And then uh, IRB 20 is going to have the 10.1.2.254 IP address. And that will be the IRB interface that's used in the V20 T5 VRF, and that will also be the virtual gateway address uh, for host 3 and any other host that possibly might be in that subnet. And so with that being said, let's go ahead and jump to the CLI of Leaf 1 and get this going. All right, so here is the CLI of Leaf 1. Now, before we get going, the IRB interfaces have already been configured. We do have an export policy that we will be using, and We'll check that out later. That's been pre-configured as well to help save time. And so the first thing we need to do is go to the routing instances and create our first MacVerf. And I'm going to run through this fairly quickly since this uh, learning byte is not about creating MacVerfs, but it's more about creating the T5 verfs to interact with the MacVerfs. And so we're going to set the instance type to MacVerf, set protocols, eVPN, encapsulation, VXLAN, extended VNI list, we're just going to set that to all and then set the VTEP source interface. We're going to use the loopback interface for that. Set the service type to, uh, let's use uh, VLAN aware. That'll work well for what we're doing. And then the interface. And I forgot to point this out, but it's the XE004 interface on leaf one that points towards host one. So keep that in mind. And then we have the route distinguisher. Uh, this just needs to be unique. We're going to call this uh, based off the loopback address of leaf one and specify colon 10 since this is uh, VLAN V10, MacVerf V10 and whatnot. And then the VRF target, we're gonna set that to target colon 65000 colon, let's say 10 since this is for uh, VLAN 10, V10. And then after that, we're gonna set VLANs. You can figure the VLANs here. We're gonna say V10, VLAN ID, 10 L3 interface, IRB.10. Now, something to point out here, remember how I said the IRB interface will actually be in the T5 instance, and it will be. We're not specifying the IRB10 interface here to be a part of this VRF, but we still have to say it's the L3 interface for this VLAN. And then we specify the VXLAN VNI, and that's going to be 5010. And that's everything for that uh, Mac VRF. And so let's jump into, let's create the T5 routing instance, the T5 verf that's going to be associated with this now. So let's call this, we'll call this V10 underscore T5. And we need to set this to just a regular 
burf uh, routing instance. And then we need to set the interface IRB.10. This is where we're putting that IRB interface. Recall that is the layer three interface for the VLAN V10. And then we need to set the route distinguisher. And this, of course, needs to be unique. So we'll still base it off the loopback address of leaf one. And then we'll just say 10 with a five on the end. 10 for the VLAN 10. And the five, since this is our T5. And so that's how we're going to keep track of that. Then we're going to set the VRF target. And this target's going to have to be different than that previous target that we set. Recall that previous target was uh, target 65,000 colon 10. Here we're just going to say target colon 123 colon 10. And so then we can use the VRF table label. And that's helpful. It may not be absolutely necessary. And then the next thing we need to set, we need to set the protocols, the EVPN protocol uh, type 5 information with IP prefix routes. So we'll set uh, protocols, EVPN, IP prefix routes, and we'll set advertise direct next hop. And then we'll say encapsulation, encapsulation, VXLAN. And then we'll say the VNI here is, now this is going to be different. Because this VNI will match up with another T5 instance. Uh, but we're not going to worry about that right now. We'll do that in a different learning byte. But we'll specify 1010 here. So it's for, uh, yeah, VLAN 10. That's kind of just a way to keep track of it. And then we do want to set our export policy. Export V10. This is already pre-configured. And so that is the configuration for the T5 routing instance for uh, V10. So let, let's take a quick look at that export policy. And so I can show you what is going to be going on there. So let's see policy options or top show policy options, policy statement, and V10 T5. And all we're doing here is we'll be grabbing the 10.1.1.0 slash 24 route, which is the IRB interface route and or the subnet, and then sending that uh, into eVPN as a type 5 route. And so with that being said, let's create the routing instances for V20. And so I'm going to save, to save a little bit of time, I'm just going to copy what we previously did and then make a few changes. So let's go ahead and copy V10 to V20. And let's go into V20. Have a look here. And there's a few things we need to change. We need to change the interface. You get rid of it. And then set interface XE003. And that'll be the interface that is connected to host three. And then we need to change the route distinguisher because recall that needs to be unique. We'll change that based off the loopback address. We'll change that to colon 20. And then the VRF target needs to be different as well. We need to change that. We'll say target 65,000 colon 20. And then the last thing we need to change is the VLANs, right? Let's go into VLANs. Have to type it all the way out and let's replace pattern 10 with 20. And you can see here we're using V20, uh, VLAN ID 20, L3 interface, IRB.20, VXLAN VNI5020. So everything looks good there. And so we're good there. So let's go ahead and then copy the V10 uh, T5 routing instance to V20 underscore T5. And then we'll make some changes there. And so let's look at what we have. Let's jump into V20 first. T5, that is. We'll look at this verf. And we need to make a few changes. Let's uh, change the interface. Delete interface IRB.10. And set interface IRB.20. Set the route distinguisher. That again needs to be unique. Based off the loopback address of leaf1. And then we'll do 205. And then the VRF target needs to be different as well. We'll set target colon 123 colon 20. And let's see, what else do we need? The VNI and also the export policy needs to change. And so that is just under protocols. I'm going to jump into protocols and I think we can just do a replace 10 with 20 here. We should be good. And that looks great. And so we have everything configured here. And so let's now take a quick look at the configuration difference between the two T5 routing instances. And so let's do show V10 T5. And you can see here, I want to point out, this is just a type, instance type VRF, 
eVPN, we want to make sure that we are using Capsulation VXLAN VNI that will sync up with another T5 uh, routing instance somewhere else in the data center. And we'll cover that in another learning byte. So definitely look out for that. And then we have the IRB interface. And recall that the IRB interface uh, 10 here is also the IRB or is also the L3 interface for the V10 uh, VLAN. So we look at that routing instance. And we can see here that we are using IRB10 as the L3 routing interface here. And then the route distinguisher needs to be unique. And the route target needs to be unique on this box, since we're going to be matching up with another T5 later. And so then let's look at show V20 T5. And it's kind of the same thing with a few minor differences. The VNI is going to be different, of course, because we want that to be different. And uh, the, the export policy, and we didn't look at this export policy. Let's look at that real quick. And what we're doing here is very similar to the V10 underscore T5 policy statement. We're matching on the subnet for the IRB.20 interface. And so that'll be sent along, which will then allow traffic to come back to these hosts that we have here. And so what else? Let's jump back, just look at T5. And then we do have a unique route distinguisher. The interface, the IRB interface, 20 is in here. And then the uh, target, the route target is also unique as well from the other T5 routing instance that we have on this device. And so, of course, like what we showed with V10, we look at V20, we can see that the L3 interface is here. One last thing I do want to point out is how the VNI here. See the, the VXLAN VNI 5020? That, and I did mention this earlier, but I do want to hammer this home, that it definitely has to be different than what we see in the T5 routing instance, the associated T5 routing instance, the VI that we're using here. If that is the same, the box will actually do a configuration commit error. So that has to be different. And the reason behind that is because this VNI is used to sync up with another T5 routing instance somewhere else in the data center. So that does bring us to the end of this learning byte. In this learning byte, we demonstrated how to configure L2 and L3 isolated tenants with MacVerf in a data center. So as always, thanks for watching. Visit the Juniper Education Services website to learn more about courses. View our full range of classroom, online, and e-learning courses. Learning paths, industry segment and technology specific training paths. Juniper Networks Certification Program, the ultimate demonstration of your competence. And the training community, from forums to social media, join the discussion.